Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted to be peering into the studio of Jeremy Hahn on this episode. Jeremy, thank you for allowing me a window into the spinner rack, and looks like there's a um, creature from the Black Lagoon back there in the corner, if, if my eyesight is as hopefully good as I think it is, uh, and all sorts of very cool things. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I am a... You know, it's my studio, and I just try to surround myself with things that really inspire the heck out of me. And yeah, I'm a, I have I have little collections of stuff that I kind of do. And Creature from the Black Lagoons, one Hellboy yeah. stuff is another uh, alien. You know, have a lot of xenomorph stuff around, and so yeah, I just like to fill my space with stuff I love. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a big creature from the Black Lagoon fan, actually. I don't I don't usually start episodes uh reminiscing about fandom quite that way, but it's just such a, a cool series and I think I think it was Dave Stevens maybe that had an adaptation in comics or somebody like that. Um, but it was uh just a very cool story and, and so high fantasy. Yeah, I, I love it. I I I love the way that they didn't intend it as such. I don't think at the time at all, but like um, it really fits the sort of Lovecraftian mythos a little bit. Like uh -huh, uh -huh. he's a deep one, you know, like if you, if you think about, you know, the idea that, that this creature is, is from another time and place and possibly, you know, reality or whatever. So I always love, you know, once I, once I got into like Lovecraft stuff, I was like, Oh, this, this actually really fits. Yeah. I just loved the design. I mean, as a kid, I you know, my uh my grandfather and I had this wonderful relationship that that you know, he was a farmer in the Midwest but loved movies. Uh -huh. And we, we were the first we you know, even though again, a farmer, poor farmer, in, you know, the Midwest, um he had the distinction of being the first person that owned a VHS in town. He, the the oh. local the the local electronics store Westco or whatever it was um got these new VHS in and he was the first person to buy one and you know they were huge and clunky and inordinately expensive uh I remember they, they gave him uh they gave him a couple of of VHS tapes even with that you know the big plastic wrapped ones you know and and uh but we we talked a lot about movies, and so he was always showing me movies that he saw whenever he was a kid. You know, yeah. uh, from here to eternity was a huge one. All of like the old you know westerns that he loved and stuff like that. But but Creature from the Black Lagoon and a lot of those Universal movies. He showed me a lot of the Universal movies, but he was always like, "Well, this was my favorite," and showed me Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I just fell in love. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to ask about what attracted you to visual storytelling. So it sounds like film was definitely. A part of that and same here on the reader side I, I love the connection between film and comics and science fiction and all of those things woven together it's just it's good fun times well i think you know i'm i'm you know a child of the 80s you know like like i i was you know in 1985 i was 10 years old so uh -huh. you know it's that thing where um it was such a weird wonderful time for science fiction and fantasy and and horror you know by by the time i was 12 and 13 i was really really getting into horror and you know you think about the plethora of of just amazing stuff that was coming out in that time period it was weird it wasn't like quite like anything else and i don't know i just um i i really obsessed over any strange thing that felt different than the world that I lived in. And, you know, again, growing up in Southwest Missouri, you know, it's the, the, uh, the library and the video store were my, you know, my, uh, I guess my saving grace. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The, the escape of fiction and the dreams and possibility. I love it. Love it. Um, well, Normally, I mention a couple of titles and uh, a couple of pieces that you've worked on. And I know that you've worked in some of those like big two and like the the large universe kind of stuff. Um, Arkham, 
Reborn being one of those and uh, Streets of Gotham being another one of those of like the the big DC kind of worlds. But I also really appreciate what you do in the world of creator owned spaces with comicsology and uh, those sort of approaches. The, the beauty being one of those that I really appreciate um, and leading man being another one that's that's also Thank very you. very cool yeah yeah absolutely so um i am curious about the that work that you've done and what that's like to kind of craft in your own world and i think i was going to mention uh hauntology as well haunt yeah. anthology yeah. hauntology yep i like that you can kind of play with the title a little bit yeah, yeah um yeah. <laughs> you know uh i i love I mean, look, I just love the medium. I, I love mm -hmm. comics. I, I've never felt anything but grateful for being able to tell stories and to make things and play with, you know, both play with the icons of, of my youth, but also now, like, my heart is mostly with creator-owned. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the stories that I can tell that are my things that are playing in these worlds that I made, you know, uh, there's something about there's something fantastic about getting to draw Batman or, uh, you know, I, I, re I just wrote um, a Black Adam thing that was incredibly fun and I get to play with stuff and be, you know, just, just do what I wanted to do. I wrote Andrew that story. It was great. But there is something about telling your story your way, uh -huh. going in and and really choosing a path and you know one of the things that's fantastic even about creator own is like i can sort of deep dive as much as i want to i can i can you know play with the larger concept but then i get to really delve into character and do all the things that i want to do and so my my heart is with creator own now and those stories the beauty and and you know uh a lot of that stuff um it's it's exactly what I want to be doing, and I I love doing it. Yeah, yeah. well, you get to play with horror, you get to play with uh, the boundaries of genre there, and um, sort of like spy fiction and and all sorts of things that uh, if you're not as familiar with comics, you might not expect it to be that kind of story. But comics can really do anything. So um, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that you can see that clearly in your work. I, I think that that you're hitting on a very, very important thing there. I think that sometimes people, um, especially people that are not familiar with more than just the concept of comics, look at comics and think it is a genre whenever it's actually a medium. And I think that's a very that's that's something important that we all have to, you know, we we as comic creators and people that love the medium, I think we have to work more to make that clear to people that, you know, like, like my favorite thing to say is like that comics are like good TV, you know, you, uh, you, you go and, you know, like, um, right now I'm, I'm, I, I just finished, uh, in, in the past few weeks, um, I finished last of us finally got to that, which was, mm -hmm. which was really nice. Uh, our flag means death. Uh, we're we're in the middle of. I'm watching Ahsoka with my boys, and um, starting the curse. But like those are vastly different. I'm talking about science fiction. I'm talking about horror. I'm talking about you know kind of a romantic comedy kind of thing. These uh -huh. these things, those were available in comics. I think people think of comics and they think about capes. And, and people punching each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's there. Of course, superheroes are always going to be part of what we have in this industry. But if you love, like think of a TV show you love, and there is probably something that, not necessarily an analog one for one kind of thing, but it might fit in the same genre. Like, oh, you love romance. Well, this is a good story. Oh, you love Westerns. Check out this. Those things are out there and then they're really incredibly well done by people that uh, love telling stories in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned people telling stories and the different ways of, of going about the process. 
um, which brings me to the idea of collaboration. When I use a comic or I'm introducing a comic to students, I always like to point out sort of who's doing what and what the roles are and um, how the books come together in some way. And, and so I'm curious about some of the folks in creative spaces that you've had the chance to collaborate with that have been especially positive, um, supportive relationships. I have been incredibly fortunate in my career. Um, you know, there's always experiences like any job that you do, whether, whether you know, if it's in education or if it's in the creative field, if it's, if it's, you know, if you're a mechanic or a tech engineer, like we all have things that are, are tough, right? There's always tough things about anything that you do. Mm -hmm. But I love the people that I work with, and I and I've been I've been fortunate early in my career. I was very fortunate to often have people that I had to work with because it was an assignment, mm -hmm. and I really just lucked out on getting to work with fantastic people. Um, now I I only work with people that I want to work with, you know, every project that I'm doing, um, it's, it's me working with someone that I feel brings something to the kinds of stories I'm wanting to tell That's early cool. on in my career. I was, I was mostly doing art. Now I, it's very much 50, 50 me writing some things for other people to draw occasionally me drawing things for, other people and then sometimes me doing it all myself um life is too short create your creative career is too short you know everything that you say yes to in this industry means you're saying no to at least a couple of other things so i've i've really made a point to only work with people that i care about that i appreciate their work and that i feel like we can make something beautiful together it's important that's a great response. I love that. And I love that approach to the work and to create. You know, it's again, that, you know, we only get to do this for so long. They're, like it's, it's uh, I, making these, like uh, my buddy, Joel Enos and I, um, he, he edited the, the beauty and the realm. Uh, he edited the anthology. Uh, we're actually writing something together right now. And um one of the things that we say to each other all the time, and it's like this become this mantra, you know, anytime something gets frustrating or anytime that something doesn't quite work out the way you think it's going to, we say to one another, comics are supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be fun. It's joyous. You know, you, you, whether you walk into the shop, you should look at the shelves and see something that makes you happy. Yeah. If you're writing something or drawing something, like if you're miserable making something, what are you doing? You can go do anything else. Go sling drinks. Go, go, you know, be, uh, you know, learn, learn, learn to surf. Do anything else in life. You know, if if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then 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 you're making a misstep. And uh, so yeah, I, I, comics are supposed to be fun. Yeah, I love that. Creative. Love that. Um, so by means of a final question, you, you were kind of tapping into um, some of the things that you're working on there with writing. Curious about what is on the creative focus, the creative trajectory at the moment, and then where folks can go to learn a little bit more and kind of follow along. I know you have a, a website, which is a very nice site. It's a nice site. Thank you. Thank you. I, I We read it that. We spent... Um... We spent the fall kind of uh, re remastering the site. I've 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 made a point. Uh, I'm going to do like a like a circuitous route here. I'm going to sure, hit on sure. hit on the 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 where you can kind of find me thing. Like one of the things I think that the way that we are able to communicate as creatives and fans has changed so much. Um, it's become harder and harder to reach your audience based on, you know, uh, social media and Instagram, you know, you used to feel like you had, you know, if you had 10,000 people following you, there was a chance that a lot of those people were going to be able to see you. 
Uh, you know, now it's not like that. You know, it's now probably if you have 10,000 people following you, maybe a couple, a few hundred will see you, you know, best, the best possibility. You might have, you know, a thousand people seeing it, mm -hmm. but it's all algorithm based and everything like that. So I really wanted to focus on the website and I have a newsletter that I do. Um, it's, it's, uh, you can sign up for it on my website, but um, I, did, I, I am huge on as much of a direct interaction, a relationship with the people that are supporting me and reading my things. Mm -hmm. I love, like uh, I do, I do a Patreon as well. And uh, it's, it's basically just like, you know, like pulling back the curtain on almost everything that I do. Like, uh, you know, people that love reading scripts. Like I've posted every script from the beauty. So you can actually yeah. see the work that we did there. I put uh, right now I'm, I'm actually posting the scripts to the red mother on there. People can see that they can see process artwork. They can see vid time-lapse videos of me inking. But one of the things, one of my favorite things that I do there is I do these um, video chats like this, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. with, Everybody that's back, you know, like if, if you if you're on my Patreon, you know, quarterly, we can hop on. I call I call them cocktail hours. You know, cocktails optional. You can but, but just hang out. You know, on a Saturday afternoon, nice. you know, you'll, you'll, end up, you'll end up with a dozen people on there all talking about stuff. And I I love that connection. And and I think that that when we had more access via social media, whether it was Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, I liked that better, but I think that now that it's harder, you know, and, and I think that one thing that I can kind of focus on too, is like the pandemic, you know, and kind of what it did and the way that it, it really changed the way that we communicate. You know, you spent so much time, you know, like what Chicago, Chicago C2E2 uh, 2020 was like the last convention for for a few years there mm -hmm. you know we, we all hung out and you, you went to dinners with your friends and and then and then you know the pandemic happened and we didn't see each other forever so we had to learn how to how to communicate in more personal ways but it was good for me because i actually figured out that this 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 personal communication talking with people was uh it was my fuel it it was creative oh. energy for me and, and and that interaction is is beautiful and really important so after that after that ramble i'm going to no, swing I love back that. to I love it. <laughs> but uh what am i working on right now well um you mentioned hauntology earlier and and for me i had been focusing on more creator owned um prior to the pandemic um, really like, you know, uh, 2019 was a really hard year for the industry on the whole. We had, um, uh, there was a whole mass, you know, like a lot of the larger bookstores were closing and restructuring. There's a lot of returns that kind of affected how, you know, how much we got paid, you know, it was, it was we were all having to kind of scramble a little bit in the industry and, 2019 was a really hard year for me. And then I lined up, I was like, well, I'm going to have to hit the pause button on some creator own stuff. And I'm going to have to really focus on doing just like work for hire in 2020. I was like, 2020 is going to be my year. I'm going to get, you know, we're going to, we're going to make everything. And, and then we know what happened. Mm -hmm. So out of that, because I had to, I wasn't, you know, because I wasn't able to focus on the other things. I, recentered myself and focused even more on creator owned. I, I did, I did the red mother, uh, at boom. I did, uh, 40 seconds at comiXology with Chris Mitten. Um, I did anthology, which is a collection of horror short stories. That was me basically having self therapy. You know, it, that's really <laughs> what it was. It was me trying to deal with these thoughts and feelings and emotions that I had and just tell good quality horror stories. But it really made me realize that as much as we always need 
and want and need to go back and do other stuff. Creator own is where my heart is. And so I, I am currently writing two new mini series that actually fit in my larger like anthology mythos. There's like nice. stuff running through stuff that runs through 40 seconds and the red mother. And you, you'll see it in almost all of my creator own stuff, little nods to, to this larger cosmic horror mythos kind of thing that I'm doing. Love it. Love so I've got two, two books that I'm doing um, for this year for 2024 uh, creator own books. I've got one that I am writing and drawing I kind of had to um I'm I'm working with Todd McFarlane and the Spawn group Good on company. some new, some new <laughs> stuff right now. Uh I'm I'm literally finishing up the last pages of this issue of King Spawn that I'm drawing issue 31. It'll be out in February. So I got to get get done with that. But um you know as and I think it's it's funny because I think that like you know going back to the thing about working with people that you love and working on things that you know you feel passionately about, mm -hmm. I I, yeah. I was kind of like oh I've got this thing that I'm writing and drawing on, on my own, I'm gonna focus on this. But then when you get a call from Todd, you don't, <laughs> you know, like it's like well, I get to work with one of my creative heroes, and you know, yeah. and he's he's so supportive and so, you know, he if if he likes your stuff he's a champion of you and he he really has been a champion of my work so um i'm going to be working on that for a little while so it pushes the 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 drop date of the thing that i'm writing and drawing back a bit so it'll probably be 2025 when we'll see that but um but yeah two creator own books coming out um bunch of spawn stuff 